I'd like to show you how to deal with large amounts of data using Hoboware, uh, specifically Hoboware Pro. Ho the free version of Hoboware also has some, some um, filtering capabilities uh, and um, you can also zoom into certain parts of the data. However, Hoboware Pro gives you the ability to crop out certain parts, uh, parts of your data file and then uh, you can save that data as a, a project file. It's only available with Hoboware Pro. So that's why we're in Pro. So I have a very large data file that I want to open and it was from a multi-month deployment of a plug load logger on a dehumidifier running in my basement. So this this file is about two megabytes. It's a pretty large file. Uh, I'm not going to look at my internal events. I, um, those would include like when it was started, when if we lost line, if we if the line resumed, which it did during this deployment. However, for clarity, I just want to uh, I'm going not going to plot those. Also, what I want to look at is I just want to look at a couple of parameters. So I'm going to look at current and power. I will turn these other ones off just again, just to make our, uh, our point a little clearer here. So let's plot this data. So you can see there's a lot of on off iterations. This logger was logging from July until November. And you can see the changes are happening very quickly. That's why you just see this big mass of blue here, blue and black. Um, blue is the is the power in watts, and black is the current in uh, amps. So we're logging every two minutes. We were probably logging a little too fast for this application, but we did want to catch these on-off iterations. So we can see here's all my tabular data every two minutes. But we want to clean this up a little bit and um, make it a little more readable. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is you can notice over here in the left, we, we can see that the logger was removed from the line uh, and left off for a while here. I want to crop out this off state. Uh, I don't really care about seeing that. So let's find out where that was. So I'm going to use my crosshairs tool again up here at the top of the screen and just click a crosshairs close to the end of this point. It's going to take me right up to this and it was 1028. Uh, so October 28th at approximately 1040. So what I want to do is I want to crop that out. So we're going to go back up to the top of the screen. We're going to grab our arrow tool here and then come down here and right click. I'll remove the crosshair and then right click again and there's uh, something called crop series. So what I want to do is I want to select what data I want to include in my file and um, everything else will be cropped out. So we're at, uh, let's see, 1028 and we're going to call this 1040, right? 1040 a.m. And now we're going to crop it. Okay, so now we got rid of all those that low state there we don't that we didn't really care about, and we're just looking at um, the active power. You can see here this is um, a power outage when the, the thing was offline for a while. So now what we want to do is we want to make this a little more readable. Uh, there's a couple of different ways to do that. You can use the zoom tool at the top of the screen here and just zoom into a very small portion of this data by drawing a box around it. So you see I'm just left holding my left mouse key and having that box and then click inside that box. And even that is quite busy. I can do it again. And there's my on off states. Again, very short cycling uh, dehumidifier. And that gives us the ability to look at this data kind of hour by hour, day by day. Also, if we want to go back to the original plot, we'll click on this little, uh, it says uh, show graph at full scale. It's this little yellow box with the arrow going up into the upper left-hand corner. Click on that, and we're back to where we were before. There's another way to do it if you wanted to look at your data day by day using your arrow tool. Double-click on your timeline at the bottom, and here's our bound. And here what we can do is change our bounds. You can see minimum bound that started on the 1st of July, even though our first data point is on the 15th. Hoboware always gives us a little bit of buffer on either side to make sure to plot everything. Doesn't want to start right on the first data point. So uh, we can ch we can change this to start on the 15th and w look to the 16th. So we get a 24 hour view. Uh, let's see, 16th. 
16th. And we could change the time if we wish. If we click done, there's our 24 hour data. Using our hand tool, we can scroll through that. A lot of data to look at for sure. The other thing we can do to manage this data is to apply a filter. Available filters for these for these uh, parameters are maximum, minimum, or average per a certain period of time. And again, that's based on accumulated uh, log data points. This logger does do statistical logging to a one cycle, 160 hertz cycle interval, and you set that up when you launch the logger. However, for this exercise, we're just going to talk about filters. So to apply a filter, you select the series by left clicking on it, and then you can select the filter icon at the top of the screen, or go to edit and filter series. This is where you select if you want to see min, max, or average. Just for clarity, let's go to average per hour. And again, you can do it by day, by uh, week, by month, by second, by minute, whatever you'd like. And again, this is two minute data. So let's go an hourly average. And you can see our new series is created down here. We're going to do the same thing for power. Let's use the icon this time. And we're going to say average per hour. Click on OK. And now those new series are created. So let's just hide those orig the original data just to kind of uh, make this a little clearer. So if we left click on, on current and amps, and then right click our mouse, we can select hide, same with power. And there is our filtered data. It's a little easier to understand, a little more manageable. Again, if you were interested in getting peak values uh, within the logging interval down to a one cycle resolution with the plug load logger, you would set that when you launch the logger in Hoboware. And if you want to save this, um, so you can view it in the future without having to go through all of these steps. You can simply go to File and Save Project and save it as a project file.